Welcome back everybody to yet another part of what if Naruto had dark matter release. This is part eight. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to thank every single person who's been watching this series thus far. And to you, thank you. So without further ado, roll that intro. Nezuko, believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! At first, the Raikage and Jiraiya would have some conversation about the events of the time period that's about to come, obviously in place as they have nothing to hide from their current company. Jiraiya would reveal the information of Naruto and the Ninetales consciousness switching to the Raikage whilst he would only confirm that Naruto would be in a difficult situation, needing to face off against the Ninetales as soon as he enters the Waterfall of Truth. Both would obviously be concerned about the Akatsuki, but B would bring up about how his tentacle clone was pretty much one-sidedly able to keep busy both Sasuke and his whole group, so if anyone pops up, he should be able to deal with them. But nevertheless, the Raikage would reveal that he would be accompanying them until the waterline, from where they would then travel alone to the island which houses the Waterfall of Truth. And on that island are countless shinobi that would happily give their lives to protect B and possibly even Naruto. This would reassure Jiraiya as he would finally give the confirmation of Naruto leaving. He'd also say that he would send some shinobi as this is basically a declaration of alliance between all the villages including the Leaf and Cloud. The Raikage would accept this and they would part ways. This is where we lead into the initial Kisame encounter between the Raikage and B, but this time with Naruto present, meaning there is a little bit of information that would heavily change. They would at first tell Naruto to stand back as Kisame would attempt to take into containment both Jinchuriki using Samehara, or at least make it seem like that is the case, since after he is at first believedly defeated, it would be revealed by Naruto's enhanced chakra sensory since he had gone into sage mode in this time, being on guard just in case, realizing that Kisame is actually hiding inside of Samehara, since with both the Sharingan, his distorted chakra, and sage mode altogether, his way of sensory had surpassed any other, since he has no conventional meaning of sensory, which would allow him to sense Kisame where others wouldn't. So he would reveal this to be as the one they had believed to have died would turn into a white Zetsu. At this point, they would once again go against B, this time having the Raikage and Naruto present, all going all out with the intention of killing Kisame, meaning there wouldn't later on in this same arc be no drawback from Kisame hiding inside of Samehara. Also, during this fight, Samehara would have gotten a taste of B's chakra, and he, it would happily leave Kisame in favor of B, meaning Kisame is once again at a disadvantage, meaning B, the Raikage, and Naruto would easily take care of Kisame in this situation, leaving us to go on to the Waterfall of Truth. And as you might have guessed, even though they would be crossing a wide ocean with any number of monsters being possible, there would be no filler-like canonicity here, as B would probably be able to handle anything they throw at him, being the Eight Tails Perfect Jinchuriki. So, we would move on to actually getting on the island, where Naruto would commune with the locals and so on and so forth, having split off from not B but the Raikage, and eventually make his way to the waterfall, uh, some of time earlier than he originally did, meaning he would be faced with his darker self, which in this case is not another personality, but Kurama's consciousness or the humanoid version of Kurama's consciousness that had constantly been taking over Naruto's body. And even though Killer B had confirmed that Naruto would not be in any fundamental danger as long as he's there, he cannot confirm that the Nine Tails, who already has a grasp over his body, cannot completely take over. So Naruto would enter with caution. And as he enters his meditation, he would see an alternate version of himself 
with instead of his normal purple sage eyes as he had seen it, theirs being red. Instead of having the horizontal slit that he usually has, they have a vertical one surrounded by three black tomo. This basically in his mind confirms this being Kurama, as the slits on his face get intensified and his nails are elongated. They would at first stare at each other as the nine tails would start speaking. He would say, it's been a while since we've spoken, kid. With Naruto re basically reciprocating, saying that the last time they had met, he had forced him to give him chakra. Kurama would smile, saying that this is what led to all of this. Him being able to take over Naruto's body. This blasphemous chakra that destroys anything it touches. With Naruto bringing up the bright sides. If he knows what he's doing, it doesn't destroy. It merely attracts and rejects. It is a lot less destructive whilst in the right hands. Only when it's someone as evil and as blasphemous as him that it turns out that badly. This would re result basically in an interaction between Naruto and Kurama which starts with a long gauged conversation where eventually Kurama would bring up the fact that Hashirama and Madara disrupted his peace. Before that point, he had n never as much been mad at a human never mind killed them. So all this could be tracked back and blamed on Madara and Hashirama as he had actually protected over a rice field. Naruto would of course doubt this, but then Kurama would point out every single need for his insane like outcome. How he's always rageful. Mito basically dragged inside of her forcefully as she sealed him herself. On the other hand, Kushina had chained him to a moon and Naruto locked him away in a stinking sewer. Is he not justified at being mad at his torturers and prisoners? Because Kushina would actually torture him, he would reveal. Obviously, we do not know if this is actual canonly happening, but at least for this story, it does. So Naruto, even though feels sympathy, would be attacked by the Ninetales, for he does want to be set free. This would result in an eager battle with Naruto and Kurama. Naruto, being able to be in a meditative state, is able to generate a form of psychiatric sage mode as he is able to fight off against the Ninetales version of himself, obviously with no Ninetales enhancements, so he's able to keep up pretty well. And along with this, he discovered that his Sharingan is mutating, as he could see it within Kurama's eyes. He can't exactly realize what is happening to that version of himself's eyes, but he could at least determine that it is changing. So, as the fight continues, Naruto is able to talk Kurama down, saying that if he lets him out of the cage, puts him in a field somewhere, would he stop this madness? With Kurama saying he doesn't want to be inside of a seal in a field, he wants to actually be free. With Naruto pointing out that he'd be in more danger outside of him than inside, since even though he's highly destructive, he won't be able to hide from the Akatsuki forever. They have multiple suppressants and so on and so forth, meaning they're on way better terms. And at this point, Yamato, who had been heading to the area, or at least that same island, would have been captured by the Akatsuki to form their wooden clones, meaning Yamato wouldn't really be there to protect any of them. So, these wooden clones, or these wooden Zetsu, should by all means be able to get Kurama later on, but obviously Naruto doesn't know this. But through eventual bargaining, they come to a conclusion that Naruto would improve Kurama's situation in the seal, and when they're not in some sort of strict scenario, like as if they are in the village after this entire war scenario has blown over, that Naruto would allow him to inhabit the body of a transformed clone so that he isn't in that stuffy place all along. So, with this terms, they would be able to break free in a hug as Naruto would do this off of emotional impulse and both B and Naruto, after confirmation, would head inside of the waterfall. With this, B would help Naruto not only train, but also enter the seal, and along with entering the seal, Naruto would break the cage. This would also result in a not need for him to face off against Kurama, since as soon as he releases Kurama, he could feel his chakra becoming plentiful. He would turn around as he would blast into this purple aura, not just an aura this time, but more of a skin-tight suit. With this, he would see a strange individual appear in front of him. 
She is a redhead and springing from her back are chains. It would grab the nine tails and drag him to the ground as Naruto would plead with this person to let it go. This is where we would be revealed that this is Kushina, and with this we'd have a much different interaction than what we did in canon. This time she would say that she believes Naruto has the means to unlock the chains, he just needs to try. She would tell him all the properties of the chains because they are consisting of chakra, one could mold chakra through them and potentially affect them with things like chakra nature. So she wants him to attempt to unlock it and do what presumably no other Uzumaki has ever done. After that, we get a conversation between Naruto and his mother, where she would confirm that he must find friends and loved ones that he could count on, and him leaving the seal. Not only does this give us a Naruto who is not being monitored by Kisame, but one who already has KCM by the time they enter the waterfall, meaning him and B can get straight to training, and by the time the war arc begins, they could leave, meaning they might even miss Iruka at the start, which would lead Naruto to not have as much of a troublesome time getting to the battlefield. And with that, you might assume his training with B would begin, and that's exactly what we're going to start off with. Naruto's training with B would most likely be on controlling not only this new form, which he knows to be KCM or calls KCM, being Kurama Chakra mode, but he would add D at the end, so it would be, or at the start, being D KCM, Dark KCM, as it is based on dark matter, thus being the purple hue that we give it as a visual change in Naruto and canon and this what if. So, from here on forward, not, would he not only be able to extend limbs and so on and so forth, but create multiple Rasengans using this and even gains an insane sensibility past what he originally had. With this, he would attempt to use Sage Mode, but at first it would be too much of a strain on his body. So instead, he would move his training to another subject, which is his mother's chains. And as you might assume, like in canon, he can't actually use it. And he would end up finding that he could create chakra-like constructs with the chakra Kurama had given him. Obviously, Kurama would be mad that Naruto is so frequently using his chakra train, but he'd let the boy do so. Even going into a clone form, which would then be revealed to be that he can do a similar thing, and instead of a Naruto or B body, they would use the transformation jutsu to create a smaller version of themselves that would appear similar to Shikaku in Boruto, but obviously not contained. So this would leave Naruto with a construct like chain that bears the effects of his dark matter and even have a destructive nature which would mostly stem from the combination of normal chakra or Naruto's corrupt chakra with Kurama's, making it more of an antimatter than dark matter. But since this isn't that exact what if, only when one makes direct contact with the chain, a portion that is touching the chain would somewhat decay. That is, if Naruto was it so. Meaning Naruto's form itself is destructive, so even if you get him unconscious, if he still bears the chakra around his body, he would most likely injure someone to the very maximum. This also gives us a point where Naruto is I'd say at least confident in his abilities, leaving both him and B to leave the waterfall, which means there is no actual Kisame encounter since he is actually dead in this what if, meaning they could head to the Five Nation Council or whatsoever and actually be a part of the war. Even though at first the Kage would argue that they don't want Naruto and B present, they would agree to fight on the back line as some sort of reserve, knowing that they would later on be sent forward as they would be the only choice. They would accept this as the Hokage and other Kage present would let them do so. Also talking about the Hokage, at this point Tsunade has recovered and would have joined the alliance meaning Jiraiya is no longer current reigning Hokage, which would also leave us to go a similar route in canon to Gara becoming the leader of the Shinobi Alliance. And at the end of the day, it was his word that let B and Naruto partake in the backfield battles. So going forward, we will be going over the actual war arc. The warring period would now start as 80,000 odd strong Shinobi, 
would be aligned on the battlefield, split into multiple platoons led by the different Kage or different individuals. B and Naruto would be required to stay on the back lines as the last line of defense since they are too valuable to let out into the world. Meaning earlier events like the Attack Surprise Division versus Sasori and Datara would probably go exactly as to canon, as not much would really change with B and Naruto being kept away from the front lines. On the other hand, arcs like the Seven Ninja Swordsmen reunite, and even the training and escape arcs for Naruto would completely be voided as Naruto and B are already on the battlefield, meaning that those arcs wouldn't transpire during the time period of the war. And things like the Clash of Will arc where Darui faces off against Kinkaku and Ginkaku and even defeats them would stay unchanged. And as much as I would like to give a change to the Mifune versus Hanzo clash, there really isn't much interaction to be had. And even though those are two of my favorite characters, I will not be compromising the storyline just to add them in. So we would continue to the first point where we might actually see B and Naruto interact, and that is during the entire situation with Asuma. This might not be directly as you might think with B and Naruto being there personally, but maybe at this point Naruto would use the knowledge to set out some shadow clones into the world to help along, as they told him he could not go. Nothing was said about his shadow clones, meaning we might have Naruto helping Choji through that entire situation where he couldn't accept fighting against Asuma. But that said, arcs like the Damyo's protection and his protection squad facing off against Black Zetsu would still happen and the first direct interaction Naruto would have in these battles is the demonic statue or the ghetto statue who was originally fighting against Choza and Choji after the Asuma battle, but with the presence of a Naruto clone, this fight might go really differently. Obviously, the clones might still have access to summoning creatures like Gamma Bunta and some of the other toads, meaning that Naruto had access to that and might actually have been able to subdue the ghetto statue, even if only a little earlier. But with that, we would go into arcs that aren't really worth going over in the scenario, like the Zetsu imposter little arc where Zetsu would turn into Neji and attempt to infiltrate and destroy the medical camps, which, as per usually, aren't really arcs we need to go into, as they're just something that happens in the background. On the other hand, the arc or mini interaction between Tsunade and A intercepting Naruto and B wouldn't once again happen due to their early presence on the battlefield. This means we won't get that really strong moment where Tsunade places her faith in Naruto quite yet, but things like that might pop up due to other changes on the battlefield. And with that, we would head to the second day of the Great Shinobi War, as Toby would continue his plans and release his own six paths, or the six paths we know as six prior Jinchuriki, consisting of the second tails, third tails, fourth tail, fifth tail, sixth tail, and seven tails last Jinchuriki, with the absence of, of course, Gara, B, and Naruto, as they still are either alive or retain their Biju. So with this, they would head out and most likely interact with a Naruto clone over the real Naruto, meaning the clone would be in a really tough position and probably depend not from getting hurt, but by using too much chakra. As we know, when a clone runs out of chakra, it would automatically dispel, meaning Naruto would have a transmission from the memories of his clone reaching him, telling him that currently six paths consisting of Prior Jinchuriki with still access to not only Renegon abilities, but still abilities of their respective tailed beast are heading towards the main battlefield. And thus, Naruto would want to go help as no other shinobi besides him and B would really be able to handle this, knowing of course the power of the Renegon and that of tailed beast. But as he attempts to head out, he would get another transmission, this one being more threatenous towards the back line of defense and possibly even more dangerous, as around this exact moment, another clone would dispel informing him that on a separate battlefield they had encountered a 
I guess, a reanimated group, you could say, of Itachi and Nagato. Meaning, Itachi is still under the control of Kabuto, as the real Naruto had not been present to break him out of the Genjutsu. So, we would have to insert some sort of custom arc to replace what happened here. So, as Nagato and Itachi would head to the back lines to face off against B and Naruto, B and Naruto would actually inform the Kage of what's happening, so they would head to center field, or center of the battlefield, where they would instead encounter the tailed beast or Jinchuriki I had mentioned earlier. But lucky for us, even though the clone had dispelled, he had done enough damage between them to actually reveal some of which paths are which, meaning Naruto has some sort of strategy pre-formulated as of having originally fought against the pains and actually successfully defeated them. But that time he had Jiraiya with him, meaning he'd have to inform B as they continue. With B now informed of what the paths can do, and with the help of Inoichi, their friend back at HQ, having gathered information on the separate tailed beast, would also inform them of the separate abilities, meaning they also now have a rundown of the two through seven tails unique abilities. So, approaching the field, B would prepare to turn into his eight-tailed state, or at least a cloak state, running up, whilst Naruto is in KCM2. I would like to remind you, back in the Waterfall of Truth, Naruto and Kurama had struck a deal of idealism, meaning that KCM1 would technically not even exist, as Naruto would instead use a KCM2 variant without Sage Mode present, as he had been in too much of a hurry going forward. So, at this point, B with probably a one or two tailed cloak and Naruto with KCM2 would be faced with what they had determined to be a easy fight as Naruto had access to the Sharingan in this mode, so they had thought it would have gone easy as they would arrive to only destroy immediately one of Toby's paths or one of the other Jinchuriki, having been able to catch them off guard. But from here on going forward, they would get pretty cocky. Them obviously not realizing that all of them had possession not only of the Renegon, but the Sharingan. So as it continued, it would get a lot more tricky, forcing Naruto to expend mass, a mass amount of chakra using a dark matter variant of the Rasen Shuriken that would cause mass area of effect damage around itself, as it would create extreme pressures after exploding. Meaning, even those who didn't get caught by it would be affected by the residual gravity, and those who were even close to it would get pulled into it since it has a gravity field center, meaning everything is attracted towards it. So, this might even result in the destruction of one or more tailed beast, as they would progressively get more cocky, with even B being able to take out some, meaning their Rinnegan was pretty useless or was thought to be at first. The three remaining tailed beasts actually being Yagura, probably the most tricky of this bunch to deal with, the fifth tailed Jinchuriki, Han, who actually has insane physical stats, and the sixth tailed Jinchuriki, Utakata. So with this group in front of them, B and Naruto would actually be faced with a pretty tricky fight, as B would decide to take on Utakata, having a familiarity in water release and the version of water release that Yagura has, we know as bubble style, he would be pretty confident having access to both his black ink style and lightning release, so he had thought he would have the advantage. As Naruto would go against Yagura, or at least the clone of Naruto created by Yagura's ocean slash coral mirror, which creates a perfect clone that is equal in strength to the original, meaning this would be a pretty tricky fight. But along with this, the Yagura, who is standing back watching the Naruto clone, would be able to inform that clone of Naruto's every move, meaning Naruto would actually be at a disadvantage, sharing a moves and skill set with his clone, but the determined experience level might be different. So Naruto would have a very small chance of actually winning this fight, but also, B would not have as much of an advantage as he thought, as neither his ink style nor his lightning release would really end up affecting Utakata's bubble release. 
Also, on top of that, Han watching from afar would give Utakata a whereabouts of B at all times, meaning his physical advances wouldn't do much either, and even the occasional sneak attack by both Yagra and Han on Naruto and B respectively. This would lead the two to be split into groups where they would be forced to individually take care of both. Naruto needing to take care of both his own clone and Yagura, and would eventually get rid of Yagura, even if only by a lucky hit of a Rasing Shuriken powered by Dark Matter release. On the other hand, we would have B, who might be able to take out Utakata or Han separately, most likely dealing with Han first, as he would be able to transform maybe up to a 7th tail second cloak state where he might be able to overpower Han and take him out temporarily. This would leave him to have once again a advantage over Utakata and defeat him. But with Yagra and the other tailed beast a defeat, Naruto's clone would dissipate as his chakra source no longer exists, which would leave the two in a scenario where they thought they could relax after having defeated their opponent. But they couldn't be more wrong. As Obito would have been lurking in the shadows, bringing back the path that had fallen. Meaning even though that we had lost the Jinchuriki initially, with Obito rushed their body, not only through the King of Hell, but the fact that they are still reanimations, they would be able to go into their tailed beast state, so we'd still get the unveiling of the Spectral Kurama or the KCM Kurama form where Naruto and B would be forced to go against the other tailed beast, excluding of course the one tails. But unlike you might think, Naruto would actually be up front directly having a more melee-like confrontation with the rest as B would hang back and support Naruto with things like Biju Bombs and maybe some smoke screens. But this is what Obito had actually wanted, as them turning into Tailed Beast was merely a distraction. Since the Ghetto Statue had already gathered their energy, he had actually sent another team from the Akatsuki, similar to how he did for Daroe's troop, to handle B. B who was actually quite a distance from Naruto, and Obito believing that Sasuke and his team Taka, where they had previously failed to capture B, or at least successfully captured a clone, he would send them in once again to get rid of the Eight Tails threat. Of course, he believes that this time Sasuke would be successful, having the Eternal Mongekyo Sharingan finally in place. Sasuke, who at this point is still following under Obito's orders, not only because of his hatred towards the Leaf, but now his hatred towards Naruto. Meaning that we would see Sasuke listening and actually confronting B. B at first would be caught off guard as he would be surrounded in a massive black flame. This would initially worry Naruto as he would think maybe Nagato and Itachi had slipped by Jiraiya and approached them, meaning Itachi and Nagato might very well be present. But he would see B somewhat, I guess, remove his own skin to escape from it as he would transform more into a deliberate state where he would be weakened and overwhelmed by Sasuke and his group, revealing Sasuke's presence. Naruto at first would be distracted by this as he would fall out of the Kurama state not because of being distracted but because of what is about to happen. Sasuke would see someone he once considered a friend falling out of the state and even seeming pretty strong. So he would decide to rush Naruto and take him out similar to how he had be once and for all taking and destroying those eyes so that Naruto or no other in his mind scum alike would be able to do the same. But as he approached Naruto, Naruto would fall to the ground not even taking a single hit, but clenching his stomach to only throw up some sort of crow that in its eye bared a Mangekyo Sharingan. As this crow exited Naruto, its eye would start spinning as it would cast a genjutsu on the eyes of Itachi, meaning the crow that had originally brought Itachi back would this time be used to put Sasuke under a genjutsu, forcing him to want the protection of the leaf. With this, he would command his team, Team Taka, to stand down and let the eight tails go. 
as he would use his first attempt at making a full Susanoo, asking Naruto if he's coming, surprising the young Uzumaki, who would then realize that Itachi had been dropping hints while he had been fighting his clone, talking about a crow or a secret eye hidden within Naruto who would bring Sasuke to the light reminding him not only of the battle his clone had with Itachi, but also the time they had interacted and Naruto had fell to one of Itachi's genjutsu in the forest. So with this, Naruto finally understand that Itachi had attached to him the last hope of Sasuke returning. Naruto, in a happy state, would ask Kurama to lend him once again chakra, but even though the beast was skeptical of Sasuke's in, I guess you could say alignment as he had now fallen back to the side of good. He would nevertheless give Naruto the chakra as they would reassume the state. Naruto and Sasuke now hand in hand defeating these tailed beast or the semblance of tailed beast, leaving Obito somewhat disappointed but relieved that he had gotten this burden off his back earlier. He would go away in a swirl as all the remaining tailed beast would take back their Jinchuriki form as they had been unsummoned, both the path jutsu or the outer path and the reanimation being released by respectively Obito and Kabuto's command. This would leave Naruto questioning Sasuke a lot, but Sasuke proclaiming that he will nevertheless, after this battle is over, kill Naruto, since at this point the only thing he has remaining is to protect the leaf. Naruto, even though being a member of the leaf, does not classify as the whole village. So even though he has a sudden urge to protect his home, Naruto is not included in the ideal one. So know that even though they are currently allies as the Great Shinobi Alliance requires Naruto to win this war, when it is finished Sasuke would claim both Naruto's life and the title of Hokage. Naruto would accept this as they would give off a fist bump heading to the back lines where Naruto would proclaim Itachi and Nagato currently were. But along with this revelation, we also discover through the dispelling of more of Naruto's shadow clones that on fronts or other fronts of the war, his shadow clones had actually proven useful, having helped defeat both the second Mizukage and the third Raikage. And as you might think, this would lead to things like his sensory ability coming in a lot of use against the second Mizukage and his, how do I say it, nature neutral dark matter release being able to actually harm the Raikage. So even though it is true that in this case, Tamari be the most powerful wind user on the battlefield, Naruto is able to bypass the type advantage and directly damage the Raikage, meaning he wouldn't have to resort to hitting the Raikage with his own attack and would actually be able not only bypass his defenses, but also keep him in place due to the gravitational nature of his Rasengan so that the sealing unit could seal him away, meaning Naruto's clones had found a lot more success on battlefields across the war. But nevertheless, Garo would still be left to deal with his own father. So moving on to the custom interaction in this what if I guess you could say, the group of Itachi and Nagato versus the Toad Sage Jiraiya. Obviously this would be very interesting to see a non-pass interaction between Nagato and Jiraiya, but also the presence of Itachi. And nevertheless, I feel that they would overwhelm Jiraiya, but with the presence of other high level shinobi and possibly one of the other Kage, I do think this could work. So with the present Hokage Tsunade, we could begin. The face-off would start with Jiraiya and Tsunade being pre-prepared thanks to the warning from B and Naruto and would stand await for Nagato and Itachi. And as one might expect, there would be a pretty grandiose entrance basically blasting through a line of shinobi with attacks like the Shinra Tensei, Banshio Tenin, and even possibly a half Susano from Itachi. Meaning in this case, it would somewhat be a prep for the Madara fight on their behalf as Tsunade would be going up against Itachi while Jiraiya would attempt to subdue his previous student, Nagato. 
Of course, this would lead to conversation as Itachi would attempt to reveal plans for the war going forward to his Kage or his allegiance, which still lies with the Leaf. Whilst on the other hand, Nagato would be having a pretty civil conversation with his sensei. Fighting still happening, of course. He would talk about all his sorrows and everything he had regret in his world and would probably end with Jiraiya saying that he had been proud to the person that Nagato had turned into after their initial fight and had wished that he had stayed in the rain a little longer to see them progress because then him and Yahiko might have still been around to help make the world a better place. Meaning, after some back and forth between Nagato and Jiraiya, Jiraiya would most likely be able to subdue his student and even seal him, having comparable knowledge of sealing jutsu. And moving forward, we see that Tsunade had actually been keeping up with Itachi. Obviously, moves like Amaterasu and Sukuyomi had not been put in place yet, as it had been a direct fighting confrontation. She would also note not to look in Itachi's eyes and would rather look at his feet which would eventually lead into him using his Susanoo and even attempting to use his visual prowess, which of course would not work due to Tsunade not paying attention. And just because it is unclear if the 100 healings would help her survive in Amaterasu, we would not put her in that situation, as she would instead be able to somewhat destroy Itachi Susanoo. But of course, this would not be permanent as he would attempt to unsheath both the Mer Shield and the Totsuka Blade, meaning he has superior sealing capabilities. So with this, both Jiraiya and Tsunade would now be at a disadvantage as they would be forced to jump back and merely stall until Naruto could return to help them, as he is probably their best chance at throwing something like a Rasen Shuriken or a Biju Bomb. And with that said, as you might have guessed, Naruto and Sasuke would appear after some stalling from the Sani meaning Itachi would have an interaction with his brother before he went, and possibly even giving his brother the Totsuka Blade, as it is unclear if only direct Dojutsu abilities or things like Susanoo accessories could be passed on. But for this what if, it would be an exception as Sasuke would receive the Totsuka Blade and even use it to seal his brother away forever, making sure no one would ever be able to bring him back. And of course, there would have been dialogue between the brothers as Sasuke would accept what had been done to him through the Genjutsu as he would forgive Itachi and the Leaf. Through this, he would also learn of some other abilities like the Izanami and the Izanagi, two profound dojutsu abilities that would in turn cost an eye. And, as Itachi would mention, they might be worth using, even though you would lose access to one of your eyes, if the need is great enough, they should take the chance. Meaning, we would move on to the reveal of Madara Uchiha, being summoned by the first Tsuchikage Mu. But, yeah, with that, this part of What If Naruto Had Dark Matter release will come to an end. Uh, and obviously, next part is going to be the finale when we go over the rest of Naruto and finish this story off. We also have a special feature by someone that vets of the channel might recognize, be it from streams or previous videos or even help on some videos that they weren't necessarily a part of. But if you want to see that, make sure to stick or stay tuned this has been your boy six if you want to join our discord we are pretty active in there links in the description without further ado peace until next time nuts we'll meet again in the virtual world where heroes ascend keep the flame of adventure burning bright until next time nuts let's take flight